so TypeScript is finally being written to a something different and it is being written in a go so in this video i'm going to cover this TypeScript go porting basically so they are writing a TypeScript in a go and there is a reason behind that it's not a rewrite it's a port actually so it is not a rewrite for the reason because they are not actually rewriting the whole step they are not changing the architecture and the design of the typescript they are basically porting the whole thing that we that they have in the typescript into a go and most of the stuff is actually done with a automated script so it's not like a manual script yeah of course they have tapped into some specific things where they need a manual intervention and have to handle that but most of the things are actually handled with a automated script which basically convert your typescript code to the go so what you have in front of you is the staging repository of this uh development of the native port of the typescript to a go and uh, they have given the instruction that how you can try it out and this is what we are going to do in this video we are going to try it out the typescript 7 version because i'm very curious to try this and i want to see the stats and the numbers how it have that performance boost because microsoft is claiming that this is the 10x time faster i want to see it in action on my project whether it's really 10x faster or no okay so i'm in my terminal here i'm going to paste this command git clone recursive sub modules and the repository this is a really huge repository for some reason i don't know what is the reason but this is really huge i think it is 2.78 gigabytes of something and the whole code as you can see here it is written in the go the 98.9 .9 percent of the code is in the go and 1.1 is something that must be some i think this markdown files or the javascript yaml and the maybe shell script some combination of other stuff so i think this is going to take a time though i have a really strong internet connection let's see how much time it takes maybe i'll pause the video and we are finally done and guys let me tell you i was one microsecond away from killing this operation and stopping this video because it took a lot of time it is around 2.66 gigabyte of a size i don't know what is going on with this repository what is the stuff that is taking too much of the space it seems like most of the files are go files and a bunch of other things but why the repository is so huge i don't know maybe i can have a closer look and find it out so let's hit the second command which is the git sub module update in it recursive ah i'm not in the repository i have to go to the type sheet go there and uh, then i will hit the same command and uh, it is fast so what this command is doing actually this is the huge repository and if you have the sub modules inside it you have to just initialize them okay uh now we are going to hit our favorite command which is npm install you can use whatever package manager you want there i'll simply go with npm install because there is nothing much to do here okay before i go with the next command i want to show you what they have here in their documentation so they are using the hereby as a task runner so hereby is the task runner if you have a go project then you can use the hereby which is the which is a javascript npm package actually but with this you can run any kind of a task you can spin up the go task very easily with the hereby uh, it's not absolutely required okay the hereby is not required to work on the repo the regular go tooling or the go build or the go commands that will work perfectly fine but hereby is the task runner for you okay and by the way if you want to try this stuff you need to have the go 1.2.4 or something so you can get the go install if you are using a mac ecosystem like me then you can use the brew install or any other package manager of your choice so you will need a go for that okay uh so i have the things in place there so i think uh the next thing that i'm going to do is npm run and i'm going to do a post install there and then finally i'm going to run a command called npm run build now this is the actual command okay what this is going to do is it is going to give me a uh, executable binaries of the typescript 7 that i will use on my project so it will have the typescript compiler it will have the typescript checker and the all the typescript thing basically that i need so this is the command which is going to produce the typescript binaries from the go code okay so whatever i have till now is the everything is a uh, go so before that maybe i can it's a good idea to show you what is there in this repository so if i open this in the vs code and uh, just show you guys this is the whole repository i have the package or json and there i had this two scripts which i uh, basically ran it's actually npm project but most of the files if you see are the go so if i search for the dot go you can see like so many files are there 
which are actually a go files and the list is big it's not that huge but it is definitely big uh, so as I was saying that like most of the code is basically uh, migrated to a go using the automated script so they have not rewritten everything from the scratch so uh, I'm going to do a npm run build and before I hit this command I want to show you the repository so I don't have a build directory over here okay so when I will build this that means I'm going to have the binaries compiled from the go code I will have a result which is the TypeScript 7 and which will be present in the build directory so I'm gonna do a enter and see what it does so it started doing something and the go compilation has started and uh, it was very fast apparently it took just 3.9 seconds and let me see what I got here so I got a new directory okay that means it uh, it did something it was successful and i have there a local inside that i have a bunch of type definitions file the d.ts files and uh, at the end i have this binary a ts code this is the executable file okay i'm going to use this ts code for evaluating the performance metrics okay this is the result that we wanted when, uh, so we are going to use this and uh, i want to show you this thing on the real project so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, open one of my project which I have in my uh, workspace. So maybe I'll choose the um, key clock angular integration. Yeah, this is the TypeScript project because it's angular angular is in the TypeScript. So I think this would be a good example. So let me um, duplicate the terminal so that we can see the results side by side. So what I'm going to have is on the left side, I'm going to have um, a current version of the TypeScript, the TypeScript 5.3 or 4 something and on the right side I'm going to have the Go version of the TypeScript, the, let's call it a TypeScript 7 version on the right side and we are going to see the metrics on the real time and I want to just show you that I added one more script over here so I'll just open the NVIM over here and uh, if I just show you I have the package.json and in my package.json over here i added one more script which is tsc hyphen b hyphen f diagnostic so this is the command which basically is used to see the diagnostic metrics how many files are there how many types of files are there how many types are there how time it took parsing how much time it took compiling how much time it took for the type checking all those stuff we get like all those metrics and the data and the stats we get through this command so i have added this command and uh, that's what i wanted to show you guys so i'll uh, basically exit from this uh exit from my vim and now we are in our regular terminal so without further ado i'll hit this yeah, and run tsc and uh, on the left side i have my current typescript version 5.3 since we are using typescript 7 which we just built that is present somewhere else i'm going to give the path of that executable so i'll just move it to more to the left so that you can see it clearly so it is present in the slash desktop typescript go i think yeah typescript go local TypeScript go then build and then local and uh, then I have the TS go so what I'm going to do is just hit this command and this will actually run the metrics similar as what I had on the left side so we have a result okay now let's compare them so we have a 402 files here also 402 files because yeah it's the same repository it's the same project lines identifier symbols type instantiation memory use those are going to be I think almost same but let's have a look over memory use this is 14,934 sorry my bad it's 149,000 here it is 73,660 wow that's way much I, wow this is dope now I mean I didn't notice it initially this is way less actually it's almost half of the size here it use 149 point I think it's maybe I don't know how much it would be in the MB but it's 149,000 kilobytes here it is just a 73,000 kilobytes which is way less actually it's almost half of the size of what it took here so i'm already starting to see the good indicators over here oh and now let's jump over to the time so we have past time of the 0 0.46 seconds here we have a 0 0.64 seconds that is way less bind time is 0 0.11 seconds here it is 0 0.012 second again way less 
check time is 0 0.10 second check time is actual checker time that i was telling you the type checker here it is 0 0.15 so this is the time which is actually going to have the effect on your id because when you use the vs code then it uses the type checker internally and when you see a lag in your vs code when you are typing something the auto intel sense is not working or the type definitions are not working this is the lag which is actually responsible for that which is way less in the TypeScript 7 and the emit time and then we have total time so the total time here was 0 0.70 and here it is 0 0.093 which is actually way less way way less actually and i can clearly see the uh remarks what they have made that this is the 10x time faster it happens to be actually true a 10x faster type script i think the results are in front of us as we can see it is actually seem to be really fast um i think yeah this is this is a definitely a good performance boost i think the primary reason is go itself is a very fast compared to a javascript go it's a multi-threaded so definitely you are going to have a boost in the time also the io operations are very fast in go compared to a javascript uh there is a debate that why they choose a go over rust why not rust because rust is still more performant than a go but there might be a valid reasons why they not choose the rest here to have the lsp working in the vs code for those of who don't know what is the lsp lsp stand for the language service protocol so language server protocol is a thing that when you type any code any type script code in your vs code you see the auto completion you see the syntax errors you see the type definitions you see uh, uh recommendations uh like for the code completion i mean and when you want to navigate to a certain function when you click on that function it takes you it jumps to that function or if it present in a sub different file uh or if you have used some function you have not imported the quick fix suggestion you get in vs code all that is basically done with the help of lsp lsp is responsible for that so what they have given is that they have given the launch template.json so you just have to like copy this launch template.json into a launch.json file uh, or alternatively you can just in the launch template.json too that means you can launch a language server protocol the lsp in the new window of the vs code when i click on this as you can see that it's doing something and it would launch a new window of a vs code okay wow so uh, we have a new window of vs code that means we also have a uh, lsp which is in the typescript go okay so you see this option over here which is a new typescript go and the typescript go lsp now if i take you to the documentation here this will launch a new vs code instance which uses the course ls as the backend if correctly set up you should see a typescript go as an option in the output pane and luckily we are also seeing that option that means we have set it up correctly so we have typescript go and the typescript lsp uh, you can see that in the output window we have the violation of the code whatever we have from the typescript warning what you get in the vs code is basically coming from the lsp somewhere um, so if i maybe search for here uh string not string yeah there we go here it is type string is not assignable to type number so if you see this is the big json we have the results then we have items and then somewhere we have the violation so all the violations all the syntax mistake that you have in your typescript code they are actually coming from this json file which is produced by the lsp lsp is a thing that works behind the scene it is continuously running behind the scene okay whenever you type any new code suggestions the um, syntax correction or the auto completion all that is basically coming from your lsp so uh, this is really important i think this is a really good progress they have managed to get this working in the vs code i think eventually it will be available for all the ids and all the editors uh, but for now they have done it for the vs code because vs code is a microsoft product so i think if you manage to get the lsp working in your vs code which apparently seem to be case yeah you can run it uh you can actually use it for any project and uh, you can start using the typescript go version though it is not fully uh, completed and compatible with all the things for example the tsx is not supported so if you are a react developer like me then you don't have full support for the txs yet and not all the modules are completely ported to a go they have given the list like what works so far and what doesn't work and uh, most of the things are not ready yet or in progress but i think in near future it would be there but i was really amazed by this result as i have seen 
uh, this is a huge performance boost as I can see not in terms of the time but also in terms of the memory so this seemed to be uh, really good optimization and i'm very excited for it i think they are going to release the typescript version 7 somewhere in the october or the november this year and will have the fully stable version there it before that it would have a breaking version where we will have some breaking changes uh, but i think eventually the roadmap is that with the typescript version 7 it would be stable it seems to be very promising and uh, i can't wait more to try it in the production